Mum? Can I have a corn snake, please? Hi, can you introduce yourself for me please? Hello, I'm Sue, I'm Jodie's mum. Yes, so, why aren't I allowed a snake? The answer is no. No, why? It's still a no. Yeah, Whatever but... Whatever it is, it is still a no. No, mum, you've got that like, <laughs> why aren't I allowed a snake? Right, you are not allowed a snake because of so many reasons. Such as? Such as, I personally don't like animals kept in cages. <laughs> you sit in my next door hamster. <laughs> animals in cages. We had an argument about that one as well. I, I think animals should be free. <laughs> she says when she has, she's had a pig, a cat, a dog, a rabbit. Cages. They're allowed to wander around free, which we're just about to find out. <laughs> Do you not like snakes in general? I've got nothing against snakes, just not in someone's house. <laughs> so you just don't like animals in cages? No, I think it's cool. Is there another reason? Um, okay, the fact that we have a pet hamster, which I don't particularly like the idea of either, the thought of having dead hamsters and mice in my freezer. I can always get them on the day, just saying. I just know. It's just a no. <laughs> there's, there's also the fact that we've got a cat and a dog and they would be terrified of a snake. Yeah, I but they, they dealt right. with a micro pig. <laughs> No snakes coming into this house. Well, we'll see about that. We will. I'm professional. Take three. What's up, invaders? <laughs> Shush, mum. We did. We did an interview. We're <laughs> doing an interview. It's really professional. Shut up, Dan. Hi, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, my name is called Summer Davis. <laughs> Say it again when I'm not smiling. Hi, my name's Dan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan. I'm going to ask you four questions and just answer them as calmly as you want. So the first question is, do you like snakes? Yes, I like snakes because they are very long. <laughs> Sneaky. What? I don't like snakes because they're spooky and very dangerous. I don't mind them like as being there. I don't want to kill a snake. Lots of snakes are venomous. I do indeed. Why do you like them? Um, I've always found snakes interesting. Um, because of the different variations of snakes, uh, different colours, and how all different snakes adapt to different environments. Um, of course you could say that about other animals, but with snakes, they, um, I don't know, they've just interested me more than other types of animals. Awesome, okay. What do you think of when I say snake? Well, snakes are often associated with phrases such as snakes in the grass and, uh, Snaky people who are sneaky and they'll like you know stab you in the back and stuff. So obviously they're not a very positive um, you know. Uh... Not a very positive noun. Um, to me personally, I think of uh, protective. I think kind of. Calm. I know, of course, there is snakes that are not like that, like yeah, rabbit snakes. Makes sense. Not, but um, I feel like a lot of snakes are very contained within themselves. I don't know. Are you scared of snakes? Yeah, because they. I already said they're really spooky and snaky, and they have poison and uh, kill you. Keith. <laughs> 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 Big snake, or one, one that's got like a big head, because some snakes are really big, but they've got tiny little heads, and you just sort of like, like, get that snake. It doesn't really matter. But when it had the big head as well, it was the teeth. 
Alright, well, thank you for the sign language, you know. <laughs> Sorry, alligator, alligator sign. Alli something. We're not talking about f***ing alligators, oh, Dan. Okay. No, it's the snakes, not alligators. The snakes are reptiles too. Yeah, but we're not, I don't want a pet alligator. There's, there's lots of different types of alligators. <laughs> you can do your documentary about alligators, but I'm doing mine on snakes. Uh, not at all. Why? Um, I think it's because they're like, uh, warm-blooded, if that is... They're cold-blooded. I guess the reason why I'm not scared of them is because, because I find them so fascinating and so interesting that, of course, people can have phobias of something that they're interested in, mm -hmm. but with me, I don't know, I fear obviously like spiders more than snakes. Spiders uh, suck. Yeah, <laughs> they suck. Um, but I guess with snakes it's because they, a lot of them don't really attack, I mean, unless if it's to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. um, unless they, provoked. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I like them because they are kind of like me and they like to be left alone. Would you ever consider owning a snake as a pet? No. Why? Their mouths look small, but they dislocate their jaw. <laughs> I don't think they can do that. <laughs> yes, I would. Why? Um, why? Because I would get probably a relatively small kind of snake. A corn snake? A corn yeah. snake, yeah. Um, or something like that, that's tiny. Um, and I would just get like a big kind of... Enclosure? Yeah. Bavarian. That's yeah. a proper word. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I guess it'd be interesting to have one because not a lot of people have snakes. So whereas obviously typical people have like dogs, cats that like, I guess, because I like to be weird and interesting that if people came around they'd be like, oh. Because there are lots of hassle. Everything has to be panic for them and stuff. Right? You have to get a cage for every creature you want to own. Not really. Okay, not, not a cat, but. Yeah. Okay, like, okay, yeah, uh, perhaps what you do. I think, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, but I, I'd say I wouldn't like a snake, but yeah, I probably wouldn't really like a hamster either. Or anything, I've had a hamster. <laughs> Stop talking no. about other animals! <laughs> <laughs> no, because nice when I had it, right? But then, um. Are you like, talking dying. about hamsters? <laughs> no, no, because, no, like, okay, yeah, I wouldn't want a snake, but I also wouldn't want a hamster, because I've had a hamster, which is a lot of effort for all the snakes. It's not specific to snakes, it's just, well, you have to get the cage. You just, you've got two cages, your hamster. Does. So, a lot of, like, where'd you put them? The cat's, like, enough, you know? Clean up the snake. Do you have to clean up snake poop? Yes, of course you do. Uh, what does it look like? It's like scrambled egg. Oh. <laughs> hamster poo isn't scrambled egg. <laughs> hamster poo doesn't smell. Exactly, it there you go. <laughs> Right, okay, good. Thank you for um, sitting with me, Summer. Um, merci beaucoup. Domo arigato. Merci. Hey, can you introduce yourself, please? Okay, uh, my name is Emily Pink. Um, I study animal care, level three animal management. Ooh. And this is my snake, Amber. Oh, she's very friendly. My first question is, how long have you owned Amber for? I've had her for about, I'd say about two years now. Two years, oh. Where did you per uh, purchase her? I was doing work experience at the RSPCA and 
I'd never held a snake before and I saw her and then I just she actually jumped on my head and wrapped <laughs> herself around my hair and I thought right I've got to have her so perfect yeah I don't think every corn snake <laughs> likes hair but she seems to really like hair for some weird reason were you scared of snakes before owning one no I've, I've always had an interest in them I I've had a lot of people say they're slimy, but they're definitely not no, slimy. No, they're not. They're smooth. Corn snakes are just lovely. Is owning a snake expensive? No, the um, the fib was quite expensive. Um, that was £110, but that's quite decent. Hmm. Um, but that depends what size of snake you're getting, of course. And then the food, that's about a pound per mouse. How often do you feed her? Every two weeks, sometimes when it's a bigger meal, I leave for maybe a week more. Has Amber ever escaped? Twice. Tw twice. Twice. <laughs> I was sitting in bed and I was watching my telly and I saw her put her body along the glass and she's worked out how to slide it across. Oh, she's a clever girl. And I saw her uh, climbing on my telly. So. <laughs> <laughs> She's not very uh, sneaky then, <laughs> just, just right in front of you. <laughs> and the other time I went to the beach with my boyfriend at the time and what she'd done is she's managed to work out how to slide the glass mm. and she managed to escape into the kitchen and get <laughs> halfway under the tile. Oh no! So I almost lost her for oh. good. She probably would have given the old lady downstairs a heart attack. <laughs> so. Have you ever gotten bitten by uh, Amber? No, not at all. She's so good natured and everything. She's just such a, well, soppy snake. Sometimes she gets a bit grouchy, like uh, she went through a phantom pregnancy um, not long ago. She was very, very grouchy and she snapped at me a couple of times. But that, that, I totally get that. Aww. But her hormones are all, all over the place. She's fine. I gave her a chicken egg. She hugged that for a while. She's fine. <laughs> so, is uh, Amber easy to handle? <laughs> Um, she's she's quite easy to handle, but when she's a bit like this, she's a bit wriggly and a bit bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. She does like to try and get on the floor. She's not too bad normally. I normally I'll get her out in the mornings just before I go to college, and she'll sit in my hood and I'll do my jobs in the morning. And she'll be <laughs> fine. She likes to scare the postman as well. What are the benefits of owning a snake? Um. Well, originally, I. I know this sounds very hypocritical because I've got one, but I do think they're wild animals. It's not as beneficial for them. Mm. Well, of course, I love her and I would never change her for the world. But I only got her from a rescue centre because I didn't think um, taking him from the wild and stuff is acceptable. Mm. Because she's been domesticated, that's the only reason why I had there's many benefits. I love waking up in the morning, she knows my routine, and I see her with her nose pressed up against the glass like this. <laughs> so. And uh, we've got two more questions left, and the other one is what are the disadvantages of owning Amber? Uh, the cleaning up. It's like scrambled egg, it's disgusting. Because <laughs> she only eats meat, it is disgusting. Mm. It really smells. If you keep on top of it, it's not that bad. The worst is when she sits in her water bowl and does it. Oh, it's a horrible smell. And I go, oh wait, it's um. Last one is, would you uh, would you recommend other people to own a snake? Definitely, if they've got some sort of um, basic knowledge of them. I did about a year's worth of research before I even thought about getting them. So um, I think it's unfair, but yeah, I would. I would definitely recommend getting one. They're lovely and they're just beautiful creatures. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for letting me talk to you. That's fine. A weird shaped elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I can see over your jumper as well. 
I use aspen embedding because it's a lot cheaper. I prefer it because if she accidentally swallowed it, then it wouldn't do her any harm. It's just a lot more comfortable, so she can mould it, she can move it about, she can do whatever she wants with it. Ideally, you need two hides on either side. I did try that for a little while and she preferred the leaves on that side. Vivarium is about three foot which is perfect for her size because if it's too big they really don't like that it scares them no you go over there this bit of driftwood in here that i bought from i thought i think i bought it on amazon this she can rub herself on so she can get all her shed off easy she normally does it when i'm asleep she'll throw things about and rub on things and what i did because amber's a pain in the bum i sellotaped her heat mat to the bottom of her vid because she did like to throw it up in the air when she got a bit excited so i had to keep <laughs> sellotaping it down because otherwise she'd mess up a whole viv in the night <laughs> she miss it. she's just very confused continue <laughs> sorry i lost my train of thought then <laughs> that face was just so funny right one of the most important things when you're thinking about a viv I personally, from my research, what I've done, I found it was a lot better and beneficial for a corn snake to have a wooden viv. They live normally in cornfields or forests or woodlands, stuff like that. Not a lot of light comes in down on the forest floor because mm. of all the trees. So they're not used to loads of sunlight. So if they're put in a glass viv, then it can, it can be quite... Um, well, scary for them. Mm -hmm. I did this and put her in this corner, so she got a natural light, but not too much natural light. She does like to look out the glass, though. You have to make sure there's glass at the front, though, okay. because otherwise they'd be in pitch black. Yeah, That's common not... sense. These are the vents. The vents are really important. Less lets out horrible, smelly poo, <laughs> smelly fumes, <laughs> and then also it lets in fresh air as well. The last thing is her water bowl. Stop getting dehydrated because she's quite a big snake. So she could curl up and sit in it when she's a bit too hot or she wants to shed her skin because they need moisture to be able to get that skin off. It's a bit like if you're wearing a pair of tights and it comes off inside out. This is the sensor. Mm -hmm. This stays on the heat mat like this and then it will tell me what temperature it is. Mm -hmm. If it gets too hot, then it will turn off automatically. It'll just make like a clicking noise. The thermostat I got from the RSPCA, but you can get it from uh, a pet shop. This is the key that goes with it. Whenever I want to change the temperature slightly, depending on the time of year, I just put the little key in there and then I turn it to the right amount for that time of year. It's in centigrade or Fahrenheit. It's just plugged into the main. There's a little hole on top of the viv that you just sort of poke it through that's it really i like that i choose to film when a massive spot has appeared on my forehead thanks hormones hey so let's recap on our events together so i've interviewed emily about her own personal experience of a corn snake i've interviewed people that have different views on snakes to see the other side of the story that bloody spot! <coughs> I've... I can see a cat shadow and I hope it's not my neighbour's cat. No, it's mine, it's okay. <laughs> Funny story, actually. I, uh, one of my ex's sisters actually had a corn snake and she didn't want him anymore, or her. And yeah, I had the opportunity to have it for free. Like, everything, the Bavarian, Everything that comes with a Bavarian, like the heat mat, etc. Everything for free. And I was like, what? Like, I've always wanted my own corn snake. This is amazing. My mum can't let this offer down. And she said no. <laughs> so, yeah, that opportunity is not going to come round again. And if it does, then bloody hell. <laughs> I think basically what it boils down to is that my mum's really stubborn and she uh, she doesn't want one <laughs> despite what I say so I could either drop the idea altogether or I could just not 
take no as no and take no as you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> or just move next door, move out. <laughs> no, one of my other solutions is just let's get it anyway. <laughs> so I might have to get a gecko instead because they're not as scary apparently. And you don't have to keep dead rats in the in the freezer and my cat. Teddy. He's been nice to me recently. People who know me know that Ted isn't very nice. Well, to them anyway, like to me he's lovely. Or I could just stick with my cat. I think you should be grateful with the pets you do have. Because I have a cat, a dog and a hamster. And I may not be able to get my own corn snake. But I do have them and they're great the way they are. So yeah. Be grateful with what you have.